It is my pleasure to provide the opening remarks for this evaluation that IEG has carried out on IFC client engagement and to welcome all of you. My name is uh, Jose Carvajo. I'm the director of the um, private sector, financial sector and sustainable development department in IEG. And uh, I promise you that the title is the right one. So I don't know exactly what must have happened, you know. To Theresa May, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> this is not a leading indicator of the depth and the importance of the topics that we're going to discuss today. This evaluation is particularly close to my heart because it's the first one that was already underway, but the first one that was completed when I joined the, uh, the World Bank Group about uh, 14, 15 months ago. And uh, accompanying me and my colleagues from IEG and a distinguished panel that will be introduced by Stoyan Tenet, who is the senior manager of the department. And uh, also, we acknowledge the presence of Nena Stokovic, who is the Vice President, and will give us the, the final remarks after we have, we have gone through, through the presentation. I just want to open the, the session with, uh, as I said, uh, thanking you for your availability, your presence here, and just providing a few remarks to provide context of this evaluation. Needless to say, you, you know, exactly the importance and the, 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 of, of client engagement, which is at the heart of IFC business model particularly when we think in terms of the context of everything that is going on at the moment, following the capital increase, IFC 3, C.0, all the challenges that are presented with the maximized finance for the development agenda. Um, I think that there is a, a general sense, a general agreement uh, among all quarters that the business as usual, or at least business as usual related to IFC 1.0, IFC 2.0 is not going to work. That means that you need to, you as IFC, need to think of new ways of engaging with client. And it's the timeliness of this evaluation which I would like to emphasize because, as I said, given everything that is going on, the, time, the timeliness of the evaluation is very um, apropos because it's the time for you to take a stock, and this is what we have done with this exercise, take a stock of what had been the experience of IFC engaging with clients at different levels, strategically with individual clients or client groups, at country level, also with upstream programs, taking a stock and finding what are the ways in which you engage with clients that are successful, both from the point of view of the financial performance, but also from the point of view of the development impact. What the evaluation has actually done is to cover IFC model more broadly from the perspective of how it serves the purpose of its clients. It was conducted looking at IFC own strategy that was initiated in the middle uh, of the 2000s years and uh, how this strategy has evolved. I think this is particularly important, not only as I was saying, for giving the changes in the internal context and within also your reorganization, but also given the fact that the market out there is changing too and is presenting new challenges. And, uh, you know, the additionality, both financial and non-financial additionality of IFC engagement tends to be tested on a, day, on, a, on, a, on a regular basis on every single project that you approve and try to implement. So what the team did, and I don't want to uh, spoil the, the findings, I will let them present, is to look at this evol evolution of IFC client engagement strategy with different types of clients. What kind of engagements were better than others? What are the reasons, the factors determining this success? And what lessons can be built uh, robustly to inform future strategy of IFC? As always, as you would expect, um, uh, the evaluations that come from IEG always point out to uh, some factors of success and some areas that are more challenging and you have to pay attention to. This is what the, my colleagues, uh, Stefan Wegner and Hiro uh, Hatashima, are going to introduce next. And as I was uh, mentioning to you at the beginning, the proceedings are going to be the following. Hiro and Stefan will, uh, will introduce in the next 15 minutes the findings and the recommendations on how this evaluation was set up. Then this will be followed by um, a, 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 a panel um, discussion uh, with these uh, steam uh, panel members from IFC and IEG, uh, uh, moderated by Stoyan Tenen, who is the senior manager of the department. And finally, as I was mentioning before, it, was, it will be Nena Stjokovic, the vice president, who will um, provide the closing remarks. Without further ado, thank you all for coming, and I hand over to the team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jose, and good afternoon to all of you. We are very excited to see so many of the IFC staff that we've um, engaged with uh, throughout this evaluation. 
and uh, we're eager to share the findings um, with you this afternoon. So um, thank you for being here. Um, let me start perhaps with the main takeaways and the main findings of this uh, evaluation. We found IFCs um, move towards a more strategic engagement with clients, a relevant adaptation to a changing operating environment. However, um, IFC only partially implemented its model and its intention and approach uh, for client engagement. Um, projects with strategic clients, um, however, have had positive results. They've been associated um, with um, better development outcomes than projects with non-strategic, i.e. one-off or, or um, non-long-term partnership clients. So this is a positive news that we think IFC can build on. On the other hand, key objectives of the client approach have not yet been uh, achieved. Among those are the, the growth of quality uh, business, um, including in key strategic priority areas for IFC, such as IDA and FCS or infrastructure, as well as uh, business efficiency goals that IFC had set out at the very beginning. Regarding upstream initiatives, those that Jose mentioned in his opening remarks, <clears throat> we find these to be highly relevant to IFC. Uh, and a new way to engage with clients. Um, however, there's been little systematic attention paid to them um, over the years. So, um, and in our presentation here, and I will um, refer back to the details um, of these findings. So how are we organizing uh, today's presentation? We start with the context and scope of the evaluation. We will then briefly cover how well IFC has implemented its approach to strategic client engagement followed by a discussion of the main findings and uh, recommendations to IFC. So on the context and scope, <clears throat> let's um, begin with that. Um, IFC introduced a strategic approach to client engagement in the early 2000s. Um, and so we took stock of this um, uh, development over the last 10, 12, 13 years. Um, the, um, uh, evaluation aims to assess how effective and how relevant this approach has been, this evolving approach. Now, the objective that IFC pursued when it moved to strategic client engagement was to transform the institution from a transaction-focused project-by-project institution to one that's based on client relationships. Um, and the overarching goal of that was to enhance IFC's development impact, especially in those areas of um, strategic priorities that I mentioned earlier, uh, but also improve client efficiency and, and other business metrics. Um, as part of our study, we uh, reviewed three different um, types of client engagement. Um, first, the um, client-focused uh, partnerships. Um, which are essentially long-term partnerships with uh, key strategic clients like Aga Khan Foundation, Ecom, Akleda, and so on. And this is uh, where we focused most of our intention because, attention because that's the traditional way for IFC to, to uh, engage with clients. But we also found evidence in upstream and programmatic interventions of new ways engaging with clients, such, such as through InfraVentures, through Lighting Africa, through the Africa MSE, MSME program, and others. And more recently, in country-focused engagements um, for joint implementation plans such as Myanmar, uh, Mali, etc. So with this, um, let me uh, uh, turn to discuss um, how well IFC has implemented its uh, strategic, strategic intention. Um, here we find that, um, as I mentioned earlier, there has been only partial implementation of uh, important aspects of the approach. Um, IFC has become, over the last uh, 10, 15 years, uh, much more client-oriented. <clears throat> we'll discuss more of those details later. Um, but many of the aspects uh, were not already partially implemented. Among those were, for instance, the identification and uh, creating criteria to segment clients into strategic and less strategic clients. Also, um, adapting accountabilities and incentives for client relationship management as opposed to uh, volume objectives and other uh, development um, incentives. Um, and so we're concluding that um, the goal of transforming IFC to a client-based institution, client-focused institution, has not been achieved uh, over this time period. In reality, what IFC has done is to engage with its more sophisticated clients in repeat engagements. 
Um, and um, so given the lack of a clear determination or distinction between strategic and non-strategic clients, what we did for analytical purposes is to use this um, category of repeat clients, which have engaged with IFC in long-term um, partnerships as a proxy for uh, strategic clients. And we also looked at another category where IFC had started to identify potential long-term partners in its um, um, appraisal documents and board documents starting in 2006. And we took those as a second proxy uh, to, uh, to review strategic clients. Um, so uh, one, one key finding is when looking at repeat clients, that these are actually driving a lot of IFC's business. So roughly 50%, a little less than 50% of investments and more than 50% of um, the business volume um, is associated with repeat clients. This is data from 2004 to 2016. So this underlines um, the, the importance of looking at this uh, particular client segment. Um, as part of the um, study, we also looked at uh, what are others doing. So some of the comparators among the uh, international finance institutions or even the private sector, how are they approaching clients? And what are some of the lessons and practices that, that uh, we can learn from or we can build on? So what we found here is that many comparators actually implement client engagement approaches to different degrees, and they differentiate more strongly between strategic clients and those that are merely sources of repeat business, so that are undertaken more for volume and credit quality uh, considerations. Um, many of those comparators also um, deploy um, a more rigorous tier structure um, amongst their clients with more varied treatment in terms of access to senior staff, um, resources, product offerings, um, and terms. Now, on the other end of the extreme, we're finding that commercial banks actually reflect a substantial uh, client segmentation, um, including on pricing, special conditions, etc. Now, however, some of those practices may not be directly uh, applicable to IFC because of the IFC's different uh, development mandate. So now we've seen um, you know, how IFC and comparators have implemented um, their approaches to clients. And uh, we now turn to how effective and relevant IFC's own approach has been implemented. And for this, I would like to turn to Hero for the remainder of the presentation. Thank you, Stefan. Let me start with the very first findings. The first finding is that client engagement is actually the relevant uh, adaptation of the changing world. Changing world means much, much more crowded space for the private sector engagement. There are a number, number of players in the, uh, where the IFC is operating, and the, this client engagement is especially uh, introduced at the context of this kind of competi competitive field. The client engagement gave IFC improved access to the senior uh, client decision makers and gaining the deeper understanding of the corporate strategy so that IFC can deploy the needed add, and add value to the client's needs. And this is translated into the success rate in the development outcome. This is the next findings. The second finding is that IFC's uh, project with strategic clients are better associated with the better development results. As Stefan said, we, measure, we use two measures of strategic client. One is repeat client, the other one is the IFC's identification of long-term partner. In both uh, measures, development outcome success rate is better than the one with one-off client or those with non, uh, is designated as a not as a long-term partners. For example, in the overall development outcome, 70% success rate for the uh, repeat client and uh, compared to the 49% for the one-off client. But more importantly, IFC's strategic areas like IDA, this difference is much more striking. It's actually the 80% success rate for the repeat client and one-off client is only 37%. This illustrates the further implementation of the client approach could bring enhanced results for IFC. What was the, what was the factor behind this uh, different, different performance? Sorry. 
Okay, here. The what's behind is actually that IFC is very successful in selecting and choosing the good quality sponsor or good quality uh, client. We observed that you know the repeat clients uh, actually for, perform better in success rate even in the first instance and also the second and subsequent uh, intervention compared to the very uh, one of clients. The selection effects is actually explained a better outcome um, in this context and not, not rather than the learning effects of the client. This indicates client selection based on the client quality, strategic fit, combined with IFC's financial and non-financial additionality would, would much matter better for the results of the strategic engagement. On the other hand, there are the areas of weaknesses and the areas of uh, which was not achieved compared to the original intention. For instance, IFC's client engagement was expected to lead substantial volume growth, but that was quality, uh, growth on the quality business but it was not necessarily so. And areas of IFC strategic interest, like either FCS, repeat client or the strategic client is not the driver. It is rather the one of clients or the driver of the new business. Also, we observed IFC has a very limited ability to influence clients' capacity in the areas like environmental social areas, or the change in the client's orientation towards poverty focus or the reaching to the base of the pyramid. This was not necessarily the strong areas for IFC's influence. And uh, the other uh, important objective was to enhance the business efficiency through the client engagement. But this was a, there's a lack of progress in this area. We analyze the client survey results and also the, some of the performance indicator in uh, efficiency. We see the uh, average number of days between mandate and first disbursement and compared against the one-off clients against the repeat clients. Only the financial institution has a st uh, strong uh, gain in productivity, whereas the other areas is not that clearly visible. So we see that you know, there is a strong areas of uh, uh, needs, needed areas of uh, improvement in the, uh, in the effect of the efficiency through the client engagement. Additionality is actually the main motivator for client engagement, but we also observe that additionality needs to be evolved over time. We can see some good examples of evolution. For example, the case of some uh, Akreda, which is a microfinance institution in Cambodia. IFC's additionality was very strong at the beginning as IFC started investing in the initial <coughs> equity and also the many advisory services for institutional buildup. But as the bank became much more mature, IFC's additionality shifted towards much more non-financial additionality towards the assisting bank towards the international expansion, the expansion to the Laos and also to Myanmar. And this kind of evolution was IFC had a good, you know, the good help working with the client, trying to make sure IFC is relevant and meeting the needs of the client. On the other hand, IFC is also, uh, additionality is also kind of uh, winding down in the case of mature quality. I will cite the example of AES, which is a large uh, US-based engineering company. IFC has been doing lots of lots of business, investing together in the emerging market with AES, but now IFC's involvement is very limited to the very specific country context, like very high-risk country, where AES feels that IFC's engagement is needed. But on the other cases, IFC's engagement is not necessary uh, needed, so the business is actually relatively slower in the particular, uh, particular client. So there is an evolution of additionalities. IFC have to be engaged to make sure that IFC is still relevant and ability to deploy needed additionality if, if that is a demand from the client. Moving on to the next level of engagement, which is upstream and programmatic intervention. 
Upstream means it's more to do with uh, uh, building the, uh, engaging with the client to develop bankable projects uh, with, uh, it's in, com compared to the conventional financiers. Example, maybe the infra, infra venture, which is aiming to develop the uh, project, mainly power project in developing countries, assisting from the feasibility studies. Another one is right in Africa. In those cases, it's just, they actually had a much more complex and it requires different type of client engagement. It's, it's not just simply beyond the, working with the client of financing need, but it's actually helping from the much more uh, hands-on help and uh, in, the, in this develop project development phase. And what we found is the internal factor is actually constraining mainstreaming these type of activities. Incentives, institutional culture, and uh, some of the resources, and also the institutional uh, silos, how to uh, break those uh, different uh, uh, institutional barriers. And it's actually the, what we found is a kind of systematic, you know, the barriers to need to have attention in order to realize some of the important potential for, the, for this type of engagement. Lastly, we also look at uh, some of the joint implementation plan, working closely with the World Bank. And we found that the client engagement is actually going to serve the missing middle. That means one hand policy reforms and the private sector uh, diagnostics in one hand and identifying and developing projects on the other. The client have to be a kind of the, have to be in the middle in order to realize bankable project in this context. It's the same kind of those strong client relationship in the field and adopting the country context is actually the plus in this context, but the same kind of constraint we observed is, uh, is there, <coughs> like institutional issues, resource, and building the institutional capacity in the country as well. Finally, let me summarize the key, three key recommendations from this evaluation. What is one, the first one is about systematic approach. There is a need to have a systematic approach systematically to implement the client engagement, focusing on lagging elements we just identified. Secondly, the strengthening the client management, client relationship management for improving the pipeline of new strategic clients. And lastly, in terms of the upstream engagement, IFC need to have focused on the commitment accountability and incentive in order to realize the client uh, relationship to link to the uh, new incentives and the new, new type of project, uh, which is focusing on the 3.0. Thank you very much. And I hope we, uh, you see what worked well and what didn't work well. And uh, I want to pass over to Stefan for the discussion. Thank you, Hiro. Thank you, Stefan. Please take your seats. Um... I'm Stuyan Tenev. Um, I'll be moderating the discussion. Um, first, I'll, ask, I'll introduce our panelists and uh, ask uh, each one of them a question. And after that, we will immediately turn to you uh, for questions and answers. For colleagues that have joined us online, uh, you can use uh, polf.com slash IG now. I repeat, polf dot com slash IG now to uh, send your questions to the panelists and for colleagues in the audience in the room here you can step up to the mic and ask a question to the panelists so with that let's turn to our panelists uh, I have uh, Giselle Saralegi uh, next to uh, on my right uh, um, Thank you very much for participating. Uh, Giselle, uh, she has been uh, with IFC for 12 years. Um, she has worked across uh, a range of functions from portfolio management to client engagement to business development, structuring, mobilization, and on corporate priorities. Um, prior to IFC, uh, Giselle was with some other uh, multilateral development banks like EBRD, IDB, with commercial banks and some experience also in uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper, so a very broad, 
broad range of experiences. It's fascinating. So, Giselle, I'm going to ask a question. Um, we have heard uh, in the presentation about the evolution of IFC's approach to client engagement. This is uh, something that has been evolving, adapting to the external world. Can you tell us a little bit about what is current thinking about IFC's approach to client engagement and some of the plans going forward? So thank you. Um, I, I think this is a very timely discussion and I really want to emphasize that because as we are in the midst of uh, some or organizational changes that um, are underway, we can really embed again um, our thinking around client and how we want to institutionalize that. And, and you've pointed out rightfully that we have been evolving in our approach uh, and I think what that signals is um, how vital our clients are to delivering our mission, uh, to delivering the impact. Um, and so if I have to think about the three or four areas that we're really uh, advancing with um, and looking at next steps, um, they're highlighted very much in the same recommendations that you put forward. Um, so looking at uh, building uh, more clarity and accountability around our client engagement roles. Um, and there's work underway, and I'll, I'll share some of the work that's underway and certainly some of the areas that we will continue to explore. But there is certainly work underway now to look at uh, new career frameworks uh, that will also embed new incentives um, that will touch on uh, things like upstream engagement, but really put client engagement at the heart of the picture. Um, so that, I think, will be a, an important step to help build some of the clarity and accountability around that. Uh, we also need to and, and are advancing with some work streams that look at enhancing the way we do business um, and how we do business with our clients. Um, so I'm delighted that you highlighted some of these strategic um, uh, inputs with uh, the results uh, with our repeat clients, our strategic clients, and showing the important story that they actually deliver a much higher impact. Um, so really reaching out to look at how are we engaging, how are we identifying our clients, um, potential new partners, and really engaging with our strategic clients going forward. How are we differentiating there? And there's a number of work streams that are underway that are looking at creating client envelopes, um, streamlining um, the processes for approvals, um, also looking at uh, potential future streams as well of looking at how do we simplify our documentation so that when you look at that mandate to disbursement time frame, we're looking at a much more adjusted timeline and really saying to our strategic clients, you matter and you are vital to helping us deliver on our mission. Um, so really looking at the processes behind there that are going to help unlock some of the efficiencies there. Um, but to be able to do all of that, we really do need systems um, that are going to help support, uh, unlock, help us analyze, so better understand how is the performance of our clients. So creating um, a number of enhancements there that are currently underway uh, from iPortal uh, that will help us give those snapshots of our clients, uh, look at uh, the performance and the KPIs. Um, also, um, a new access um, uh, system that will be vital for clients to actually engage directly. So uploading documents, waiver requests, disbursement requests, really help that client engagement with our institution. Um, so those are key things that um, are underway. Um, Jamie, I'm going to leave for you a little bit more on the client uh, relationship management system, but there are areas where we clearly have more work to be doing. Those are, our, I think, our three fundamental areas where we're trying to focus our attention, take this key moment in our organization to say we're going to institutionalize this approach so that when we come back and, and take stock of where we are a year later or four years later, you're going to see much better results uh, and really a strategic uh, approach having been implemented successfully. That's my hope. Thank you very much, Giselle. Sounds like a comprehensive and ambitious uh, uh, plan uh, going forward. I'm going to turn now to Jamie Smiles, who is further to my right. Um, just briefly about Jamie. Jamie has been with IFC for about 18 years as a syndication and investment officers. He has uh, been um, heading um, 
IFC's business in FIC, in Financial Institution Group in uh, Brazil, uh, has been heading IFC's work in syndications in Latin America as well. And uh, prior to IFC, he has been in private equity and in financial journalism, which uh, I find fascinating. Most importantly, uh, I think uh, Jamie has been a client service uh, leader uh, in IFC. And my question to him would be related to that. Jamie, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about the life of a client service leader in IFC, a day in the life of IFC's client service leader, uh, how it is like, what are the joys and the sorrows of that work, and if you can uh, <coughs> connect with uh, what is going forward, what needs to change, what needs to remain the same in, from your perspective and experience. Sure. Thank you, Stoyan. So, uh, pleasure to be here with you guys. Um, I see some of my former colleagues, current colleagues in, in the audience. So good to see you here. Um, so, you know, for a long time, IFC has been a project-based financial institution. And over the past 10 years, we've been trying to change that and focus more on, on clients. Um, and, you know, this process is not easy. If you talk to any financial institution, they've all gone through this. And it does take a, a long time. So I think we're still in this process, and I liken it to um, a soccer or a football metaphor. You know, you've all been to your kids' soccer games, right? And what happens when one kid gets the ball? Everybody goes to the ball, right? Nobody's playing without the ball, but it's an important skill to know what to do when you don't have the ball. And so I sort of liken that to... You know, when we have a deal, everybody knows what to do in IFC when we have a deal or a project, and everybody wants to be a part of it. But then there's nobody left to play without the ball. And so a lot of times being a relationship manager to me is learning how to play without the ball, right, to play as a real team. And it's a challenge. It's not easy because there's glory in being on the deal and with the ball, but there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. So, you know, that's part part of it. And so one of my questions is, you know, how do we learn how to play without the ball for IFC 3.0? I think that's going to be, that's going to be critical if we want to deliver to our clients. Um, when, when Jin Young came, I think he observed this, right? And when he was going around asking people, so how much time do you spend with clients? He found that it was at a senior level, there was not, people weren't spending a lot of time with clients. So he said, well, maybe I should, um, identify a few senior people and assign them to some of our key clients on a dedicated basis. So this is your full-time job. You have these 10 clients and you work with them. Ultimately, long-term, you try to develop business. That's clearly the goal, but you don't always have to be selling them business, right? You can play without the ball. Um, so we had a lot of, you know, we didn't have quantitative um, KPIs. We had more qualitative KPIs. And I think we all found that in some quarters in IFC, this was a really revolutionary. How could you not have volume targets, right? What are you doing? Are you just whining and dining, you know? Um, so, but the idea was really to try to change our mindset and to think longer term, not just about the next deal I'm going to get, but really to get access to the right people, develop those relationships, and be able to think strategic with that client and learn what they're trying to do in the next five or ten years, and how can IFC be a part of that, or not, right? I mean, there's some clients that maybe they shouldn't be our partners or we don't have the same goals in mind. Um, so I think there's a nice um, consistency with 3.0 because we're really trying to change our mindset and the way we work, thinking longer term, but how do we evaluate people for that longer term thinking if it doesn't result in a deal next year, um, and how do we reward them? <laughs> Um, the third thing I would say is that, you know, as a relationship manager, client service leader, whatever you're going to call yourself, you're, you're trying to put yourself in the client's shoes. I think that's a really important shift that you need to make. And when you make that, you see IFC very differently. Um, at the same time, you're still the advocate of IFC and the client. So there is an ambiguity to it because people in IFC want to see you as you're my advocate with Client, the client comes back and says, no, 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 you're my advocate for me within IFC. So there's this kind of dual role that you have to balance, if you will. And it's not straightforward. It requires some judgment and 
being comfortable with that kind of ambiguous um, situation. The final thing I would say is that I think as a financial institution, we are providing a service to our clients. That's fundamentally what we do. And so in order to do that well, we need to develop a client service mentality, right? Just a desire to um, provide good, efficient service. Um, so I think that's another longer-term challenge that we have to, to meet and that I think we were trying to do and as client service leaders, and they were trying to give us the freedom to do. And sometimes you have to give people the freedom and the patience to do that, you know, without demanding immediate results. So thank you. Thank you, Jamie. And for me too, uh, my friend Jim Emery. Jim has been, has a long and distinguished career in, in IFC, in the World Bank Group. Um, he is now head in the Development Impact and Sector Economics Department. Prior to that, Jim has been head for strategy uh, and the economics in Africa, uh, for manufacturing, uh, agribusiness and services. So he has covered regions, he has covered sectors. And uh, Jim, I'm going to ask a question regarding IFC 3.0 where um, it's a new philosophy, a new vision for IFC, creative markets, cascade. Um, what, in your view, are the implications of this new, to make this happen, to implement uh, successfully? What changes do you think uh, need to take place in the client engagement? Well, thank you, Stoyan. And um, first of all, let me, uh, I wanted to thank IEG for what actually has been a very helpful study. Um, and a very constructive engagement. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't always agree with all of the recommendations that you come up with. And I think this, the fact that we did on this is illustrative of the, um, the good work that you did and, and the way you sort of got behind what was going on and how we were um, doing the client sort of I'll relationship business. <laughs> it wasn't about you, Stoyan. It's, it's, it's the, you know, the guys who really did the work were Stefan and, and Hero, and I wanted to thank them and, and also recognize that it's important to have people at IEG who really understand that working with the private sector as clients is different than the public sector, um, and that understand some of the uh, imperatives we have and the constraints we're under. So it really helps having you guys involved. And I also wanted to recognize um, the role that Jamie played as the technical counterpart. It wasn't clear in the introductions, but he was has been the primary uh, point of contact for the team at IFC and really helped sort of steer them to different information routes and, and talking to people to find out what they needed to find out. And Giselle is now in the role of heading up a task force that we've established to come up with the management action plan. So in this, in this process, we have the recommendations um, we had our response to them in, in which we essentially agreed with the recommendations, but now we have to set out what it is actually we're going to do as IFC management to implement those recommendations. And Giselle is leading a team that includes Jamie and, and other representatives from industries and other VPUs to come up with that in the next few months. So now I will, I will, get, I will answer your question. Uh, look, I think that um, one of the things that, that really was very useful to us was the, the finding that these engagement with strategic clients generate better development outcomes than one-off clients. Um, and that's, that's helpful because very often we're, when we are embarking on some new venture initiative related to creating markets, we're often looking to how can we involve clients that we know, clients that we know have the capacity to do the kind of developments we're looking for, have the, have the strategic alignment in entering that sector or entering that country, um, and they become an important element of many of these new initiatives. And without them, I think it's, 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 very, it's much more difficult to kind of um, start from, from scratch and working with clients that we don't know or clients that have limited capacity, that don't have uh, the depth of experience and the footprint that many of our strategic clients do. Um, and this is important because uh, the board often pushes back on some of these relationships. I think they see us as being 
too cozy with companies that are just repeat clients and maybe not strategic clients. Um, and so it's, it's been very helpful to have this recognition of the value of strategic clients and, in fact, the, the recommendation that we need to do more with them and do it better than we have been in order to really uh, generate even better results. Um, so that part of it, I think, has been key. There's a, there's a big difference between the concept of IFC as a lender of last resort, focusing on only where we're bringing financial additionality, to the partner of choice. Um, and that's, that's a big transition. As Jamie said, it, it takes time to get there. But what we're, what we're trying to do now um, is to develop different types of value added that will help our clients generate the kind of impact in the difficult situations where it's not so easy. Um, and doing that takes bringing uh, many different types of value added, not just the money. Um, you know, when I think of what um, we've done with some strategic clients like Indorama, where we had a long relationship with them in, the, in, uh, in Indonesia, but then, uh, and they kind of graduated from that, but then when they went to do their first project in Nigeria, we were very important partners for them in what was now 10, 13 years ago, a very... Uh, uh, um, unstable situation where they put a lot of money into a big petrochemical plant. Uh, they've now just, uh, we're now just completing the expansion of their second project there, so our third engagement with them in Nigeria, um, which has brought tremendous new large-scale manufacturing investment uh, to a country that uh, desperately needs it. Um, that wouldn't have been possible without a trusted client, someone we knew uh, and that, I think that trust went both ways. We supported them in many ways um, in operating in that difficult environment. And now we're engaged with them in the cotton sector in Uzbekistan. Uh, we would never, I mean, the cotton sector in Uzbekistan sets off so many red flags in the World Bank group, uh, whether it's environmental, whether it's forced labor, whether it's, you know, uh, all of these other things. Um, and so our ability to do that was predicated on, on Indorama's strengths as a company and our trust in them in terms of how they would operate in the sector and also in a partnership with the World Bank uh, to address some of the social and environmental issues. Um, so it, an engagement like that just is, you know, wouldn't, isn't possible without a long-term partner who has the right characteristics. I think Hero alluded to uh, uh, Al-Qaeda, Bank in uh, bank in Cambodia, where we started with a small microfinance institution, uh, helped build them into the largest commercial bank in the country, um, and really developing the financial sector along the way. And now we're supporting them in their expansion to uh, Laos and Myanmar. That type of relationship uh, evolves over time. It develops in different ways. Uh, but I think what we're trying to demonstrate by um, you know, doing the kind of analysis that, that IEG has done is that um, that evolution is an important part of the relationship. It's an important part of continuing to achieve new and different types of impact over time with clients where you can really um, have a strategic alignment and uh, develop into different dimensions as that relationship evolves. So let me stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, Stefan Hero, can you please? We're going to move now to questions and answers, so the fun part. And while uh, colleagues uh, in the audience think about and formulating their questions, I'm going to start with the question that we have received uh, online. And Jamie, uh, I think your soccer game metaphor is resonating uh, with the audience because there is an interesting question related to that. I'm going to read it from the screen. Do we need a set of incentives to play without the ball? How can we institutionalize that concept? And here, you and I, we had a discussion uh, recently where, for example, in the process of working on this evaluation, we interacted with some private uh, partners like Standard Chartered and others. And I was struck by the fact that they, in some ways, they can take a longer term perspective than IFC can. You would think it's the other way around because we always hear about uh, quarterly earnings statements and short term orientation, but in fact, actually, 
in some ways, I was struck by the fact that they can take a longer term perspective. We seem to be stuck in this annual budget cycle and annual targets, and our horizon often do not extend beyond the one year cycle. And for, as you meant, for us to develop long term relationships and play without a ball for a couple of years or something like that, you need to have a long term horizon. So perhaps, Jamie, you can talk about uh, the incentives and what if you have some ideas that we can do to institutionalize, change them, and, and, and make them more robust. Yeah, thank you, Stoyan, absolutely. I think um, in terms of incentives, we do respond to incentives. So I think if, if, if we have them, you know, we will respond. And I mean, in some ways, it's a management challenge, right? How do you evaluate people across a number of different dimensions Particularly, I'm talking about investment officers in this case, right? It's, you know, investment officers can be evaluated based on the number of transactions they've closed in a given year. That tends to be the typical way you get evaluated. And if you're an investment officer, you're going to respond to that and say, well, you know, I, didn't, I got to close this deal, so this is what I'm going to spend my time on. Or I'm going to do a debt deal instead of an equity deal because an equity deal is more difficult, it takes longer, it's more uncertain. So that was kind of the world we were living in. I think we're trying to come out of that and look at, okay, well, investment officers might do a number of things, right? So from a relationship side, you might want to give them more time to develop a relationship. And some of the things might be like, well, what kind of access do you have to key decision makers, right? Who do you know in, in the company? What else has been going on? What other kinds of engagements with that entity have you been doing while playing without the ball, right? What have you been doing to increase your connection, your strategic understanding of that client? So um, I think we need to think about it, and there's a number of ways we can, we can do it, and it's about managers giving people the time and space and developing that ability to look at, look at people in a more And I think we've got a, a bigger challenge too ahead of us because part of this um, central to the upstream and kind of 3.0 is really looking at a much earlier engagement um, and not just with our strategic clients but with our public sector clients. And I say that with my, infra my infrastructure hat fully on. Um, but a, a wonderful example of that type of work was um, in Argentina, for example, when we went in, uh, Tonchi, um, our um, energy sector, uh, sector specialist, went in to literally work with the government uh, on putting together um, their renewables energy platform, their, their, uh, their PPP uh, process going forward. And so that was precisely the type of work that we are going to be segueing into more and more identifying those areas where it may not be the investment, it may not be the debt or the equity that we're, but early on uh, work engaging with very different partners uh, to unlock opportunities to create those markets. So, if, any questions from the audience? Yes, please. Hello, thank you very much. Um, Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, my name is Cleo Rosinus. I'm a senior advisor in the constituency office representing South Africa, Nigeria, and Angola at the board. And um, I must confess, I had difficulty understanding what was being assessed by IEG. And um, if you would in indulge me, I mean, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. <laughs> but obviously, the, you know, the two concepts here, strategic client and development outcome. So my questions relate to essentially what that means. And I was glad for the point that you made in your answer about the issue of differentiation, because what I was wondering is like what theory underpins the notion of what's strategic. So if your strategy is to promote regional integration and trade, then are you looking for home and host country, or like a, the home country of a firm is proximate to the host country, for example. If your strategy is the development of the domestic private sector, then obviously firm size is, is a factor, particularly in, in say, sub-Saharan Africa. And if your strategy is south-south, then obviously Indorama makes some sense. So I don't really understand, I didn't understand clearly this notion of what it is that is strategic. And so in that sense, I found it very useful 
when Giselle said that, you know, you're thinking of these in some kind of buckets and differentiation and envelopes as to what theory underpins the notion of what is strategic beyond repeat clients. And then on development outcomes, what do you mean? Is it the project? Is it the ENS standard? Is it the, non is the financial and non-financial additionality? Or is it clustering spillover, structural change, sectoral impact, and so on? And finally, on, this, on the recommendations, I was quite surprised there's no one from bank here. And, and even though it's implicit in the recommendations, you, you, you haven't been clear enough, I think, in the recommendations of the importance of, of, and the difficulty of the complementarity here, essentially as the presence of bank helping IFC identify and define the strategic client and the development. Excellent, thank you. That's a host of uh, questions. We can spend the rest of time answering all those. And so that's why uh, let's try to be disciplined. I cover these are very important and useful questions. So we can perhaps I, we can start with uh, Stefan, you just to explain what is this all about? Because obviously it was not uh, very clear to some uh, people in the audience. Very briefly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, I briefly alluded to that. So in absence of IFC's actually distinction between strategic and non-strategic clients, what we did is we used um, long-term clients with repeat engagements with IFC as, to, as a proxy for strategic clients. And we analyzed those and we analyzed the results of those in terms of the development effects and the additionality and compared and contrasted them with a comparator group of the non-repeat, so the one-off clients. Um, so uh, this actually cuts across many different strategic areas. You know, some of these clients were in either country, some of them in FCS, uh, some of them in both, some in infrastructure and so on. So we didn't cluster them specifically uh, towards uh, meeting sp specific IFC um, uh, um, strategic priorities. But the, uh, the rationale, um, as I think I alluded to, of IFC to move to strategic client engagement is precisely uh, to to meet better those strategic objectives and do more pro and more projects, more investments, be more effective in those environments that are more difficult to do. So this is IDA, FCS, and um, and um, infrastructure among others, climate change and so on. So we didn't specifically use those buckets. In terms of how do we assess development um, effectiveness, um, we use four criteria um, and one over overarching rating for development outcome which is composed of um, business success, of um, economic uh, sustainability, of environmental and social um, effects, and private sector development. So it encompasses all of those things that you mentioned. And it's a synthesis uh, rating for development outcomes. Um, and, and this is the ones that we uh, presented here in, the, in that one slide. Um, uh, regarding recommendations, I think, um, you know, this is a very shortened version of the report. We have some implications for how IFC needs to work together with the bank and host um, governments, developing country governments, on the uh, creating markets agenda uh, in, in the context of the country engagements and also um, uh, for upstream engagement. But it's also an important aspect, as you point out, for the IFC 1.0 and 2.0 um, agenda because many of those clients that we um, studied actually, you know, IFC helped them to go into higher risk um, areas, into new sectors and so on. And, and many of those actually involve um, difficult political security regulatory issues. Yeah, I think as Giselle mentioned, in terms of what is strategic and what is not, that's something we're going to be going into on a sector by sector and region by region basis over the next year to, to be more systematic and clear about, you know, what that means. I would also say, though, that, you know, working in the private sector, it's dynamic, right? So firms change, strategies change. We also need to be opportunistic sometimes, which I think will continue to be because it's just a fast changing marketplace, especially these days, and especially if you're working with you know, in some sectors where we work with, with new firms and younger firms. Just to add to that, I think uh, our, in the absence of very clear defined strategic criteria, we looked at ex ante criteria, which is the intention for IFC to develop long-term partnerships with particular client groups, presumably for strategic reasons and, and alignment of incentives, interest strategy. 
And then the ex post criteria, which is repeat clients, based on the belief that if you're working with some client, there is good strategic reasons motivating uh, this, um, this uh, repeat experience. My name is Katia Cantor, and I work at the IEG on the collaboration and knowledge flow evaluation. So IFC is part of the World Bank Group, and um, part of the reforms in 2015 was to become a solution organization, a solution bank. And for that to happen, collaboration and knowledge flow was key to achieve. So did the evaluation in some ways look at efforts or aspects of uh, IFC uh, to enhance collaboration among departments, knowledge flow, to enhance, to improve client engagement and vast development effectiveness? Yes, thank you. Actually, the, uh, we looked at the, uh, particularly the country context because the country, you know, the engagement is actually the, uh, the most important point of, uh, well, across the World Bank Group to look at what kind of the uh, client engagement, IFC's client uh, interface and the World Bank Group's, you know, the country, uh, you know, the overall strategy. In particular, and the most important part is actually the uh, the joint implementation plan, because that is a platform collaboration within the World Bank Group to have certain, you know, the uh, sector or the thematic objective at the group wide, and how to work together within the World Bank Group. So the bank has certain mandate to work with the government with fixing the reform or the other other kind of challenges, and the IFC is talking with the private sector companies or even identifying potential client to work in this particular sector. For example, we look at the Myanmar power, we look at the, we observe how the bank is doing and what the IFC is doing, and the IFC's case is already talking to the potential investors, uh, what kind of constraints are there, and they're communicating each other what is a, what is a perceived constraint from the private sector, communicating with the bank, and how the bank is engaged. So there's a lot of, uh, which is, uh, this is happening, and uh, but you know, the, we see there are some positive aspects about the collaboration. Yes, uh, just so for me to add, um, I think um, client engagement is about bringing the best of the World Bank group to the client to solve problems and address issues, and therefore, it, I think it's intrinsically linked or it implies collaboration to bring those assets and products and services in the best uh, way. So, we looked at all that in the evaluation in terms of how to combine instruments and across IFC advisory investment. So it's a very important aspect. And try to see, I think uh, we don't find the differentiation between sort of strategic and one-off clients in terms of coupling our assets and instruments to those clients, which was one interesting finding. And therefore, the question and discussion whether some differentiation Tailored There's clearly another space, and we tend to look at clients as, again, uh, those that we invest in, whether it's debt or equity, but I think there's a larger space, and, and certainly one that we want to explore more, about building partnerships, um, and that can be a number of things. I can put my syndicated lending hat on and say, you know, mobilizing more money um, in, but it can be also looking to partner with um, entities that are out there that are creating new technologies, disruptive technologies that will help leapfrog like the cellular uh, phone use has uh, in the emerging markets. So I think there's a lot more that we can be doing in that space. And given the incredible uh, power that we have to convene, um, that we see that with our annual meetings, um, really I think there's a lot more that we can explore to develop these upstream solutions, um, crowd in more financing, and find some more of that disruptive technology that will make a leapfrog difference uh, for our countries. Uh, any questions from, I can perhaps ask a question, probe a little bit deeper into this uh, upstream uh, space that uh, there is so much focus on uh, right now. Uh, also to link this question with the role of the World Bank and the partnership between um, IFC and the World Bank exactly to facilitate or make the upstream engagement more effective. Um, what we 
talk, to, talk about in this evaluation is the so-called missing middle. That's the space between country diagnostic or policy and reforms and then bankable transactions, which is a space that is very hard to bridge uh, in our experience and where there is a lot of hope now on systematic country diagnostics. And Jim, I'm going to turn to you here. We have heard about some good examples in Kazakhstan where identified three sectors that were promising. But what needs to be done now to go from there, from the diagnostic to the bankable, real tangible uh, ideas, uh, opportunities that uh, can translate into investment? Yeah, a few things. Um, in fact, there was a an email from Philippe that just came in about wanting to, uh, in essence, beef up how we look at country strategies. Um, and I think that uh, we need to get go beyond typically what we've done in the past, which is to identify some priorities and then go see if we could find some firms we could work with in those priority areas. I think what we're talking about now is a much more deliberate engagement where we not only identify the priorities, but we do that based on what the potential contribution to uh, growth and, and diversification in the economy is from that particular area. Uh, so there's more an analytics behind the development of those priorities. And then being more deliberate about uh, how we address um, whether it's the policy environment, whether it's the lack of capacity in the private sector, uh, whether it's the, uh, a lack of finance, whether it's a lack of uh, standards, whatever the sort of main constraints or issues facing the private sector in expanding in that area um, and being very precise about how we address those constraints. I think that's what the real, the real difference is now. Um, and uh, it, it, it's going to involve a, you know, a, a deeper engagement. I think we all recognize that. Um, and you know, it's going to involve the cultivation of different types of client relationships, not just you know, with our with strategic clients that we know, but with others who would, you know, are gonna be new firms we're working with. So it, it's a broad mix. I'm a Leonardo Bravo, financial institution group, sector leader at the IG. Um, repeat client and sponsors have been good for IFC 2.0. So you do, in a set of projects, you do a set of projects, but are they first capable and second interested in IDA, fragile, and, and um, um, energy, like a, where, where World Bank is going? Because they are good at, at what they are uh, have been doing, but are they interested in going the extra mile and to go to very risky countries? Hard ones. <laughs> um, look, I, I think the reality is that we have been able to partner with uh, our clients and take them into the most difficult regions. Um, Mongolia, uh, I mean, a huge mining investment that would not have been in, uh, possible without, frankly, IFC's engagement. Uh, and yet, uh, if we look at not only what we invested, but uh, the money that we were able to mobilize from our, our other partners. It's a compelling story about a big turnaround, a big investment that is going to, uh, and I'm not sure if I have the figures right, but I think it's over 2% of GDP literally generated out of this project. So it's tremendous. Um, yes, we can work with clients that will go into the riskier areas and the IFC uh, and what we bring to the table is absolutely vital in those discussions. Uh, will we be able to bring all of our clients into each of uh, and every of the regions? That might be more of a challenge, but I think when we look at, and I come back to kind of the country uh, and sector diagnostics, that exercise coupled with our client engagement will help unlock a bit of that strategic vision going forward and where we can really tap into those opportunities. Uh, and then also looking at who are the next, what's the next generation of clients that we can crowd in to work with us as well. So the report goes into a little bit of detail on this. I'll let them answer it. But from my perspective, um, I think there is a challenge here, especially when you're talking about larger firms, right? I mean, they even if you say, well, there's a great sector in you know, Kazakhstan that we have identified and we want to bring you in it, 
you know, sometimes it doesn't move the needle for them, right? They're just too big, and so they're focused on the biggest emerging markets. So that's why it's important that, you know, when we have these strategic lists, it's not just the biggest clients in the world, right? Because they're not, they're not necessarily the ones who are always going to want to go into those hardest markets where the deals might be s smaller. And just the total market size is just not big enough for them. So I think we just need to be realistic about what some of these firms will do, even if there's good investment opportunities. Thank you, Jamie. Um, I'm going to bring a question from our online audience. How do you reconcile seeking a long-term relationship with a client with the requirement of consistently achieving high aim scores in every project with that client? So is the project perspective versus the client perspective? How it comes to play into uh, building strategic long-term relationship with, the, with clients? Uh, Jim, perhaps you can get some light on this? Yeah, actually, that it, it's a good uh, opportunity to, to make a point about aim, I think, which is that we would not expect um, every project with a strategic client to consistently achieve a high aim score. We would expect that, like any other client, there would be some distribution uh, of a range of scores in the different engagements with those clients. Um, not everything we gonna, we, that we do with a company is going to be you know, spot on one of our great priorities in a high need country that's high risk. Um, we do things with clients that are more sort of relationship management, keeping things warm, helping them where they need some help, where it's aligned with what we're doing, but it may not be one of our highest priorities with the knowledge that the next one or the one after that will be an engagement that's really important to us. And, and maybe an example of that is um, a recent project we did with Yara Fertilizer. This is a, a big global fertilizer producer. Um, they have an existing network in Latin America, and they're just expanding into distribution in Africa. Uh, so we helped basically uh, expand and improve the performance of their subsidiary in Colombia and help them with um, uh, an expansion into uh, Zambia, Malawi, and, and Mozambique. Um, so that was that was okay. It was existing fertilizer distribution, but it was in essence a way to demonstrate that we could work with them uh, in anticipation of what will be the development of a very difficult project in Ethiopia that involves a, uh, a phosphate mine and a fertilizer manufacturing and processing plant. Uh, so that was in many ways sort of a warm up for what the big prize will be, and then others with them as it evolves. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Stoyan, to you. Thank you, Jose, for uh, having me here. I'm representing IFC management team, and my job is to tell you where do we go next um, after this excellent um, evaluation. I would really like to thank the panelists. I, I learned a lot from every single of you. You took me a little bit to the past on what has happened over the last um, decade or so, uh, but also with Giselle, Giselle's help also a bit to the future, um, and I will focus a little bit on that. I just wanted to say, I mean, uh, that IFC, the only way IFC can deliver impact is through our clients. And, you know, there is no doubt that clients are central to what IFC does to our business and, and uh, to our uh, impact. And yes, the, the way how we approach clients over the years has evolved, um, but I think that uh, there couldn't be a better time to discuss uh, the revisions or improvements in, in the client engagement than now, when we clearly have um, a large stamp of approval by our shareholders through the capital increase that they have <coughs> approved and where we know that in 12 years we will be twice as size as we are now, um, and, and that we will be shifting to more difficult, more challenging places, uh, places where 
private sector is not yet present. So that, that really um, uh, calls for a very different engagement approach, and that's why I really appreciate the recommendations uh, of the study, and the management team of IFC fully agrees with the re recommendations. I don't think that we could have said it um, any better, and I just wanted to thank the team who produced it, uh, because it's ex extremely timely and very important uh, for us. Maybe just to recap that we did submit the official response to the board or uh, to Cody in January that Giselle is leading this um, a small group that's uh, helping the management team on the action plan uh, based on this independent evaluation. And uh, I wanted to focus on four areas, four next steps. Um, many of them have been, have been mentioned here. The first one, the, the, the dearest to my heart, and the one where I think that's going to be the big delta in terms of what IFC will become over the years, is this upstream space. Um, to me, even, even the definition of the client for this study is a proxy because we didn't have anything else, right? It's a proxy. How many times do you deal with the same client? But that's not necessarily a strategic, a strategic client. As our colleague from the ED office has pointed out, to me, the strategic client is the one who can be the first of its kind to invest in Afghanistan, in the energy sector, or in the financial or microfinance institution in Niger. Or those are, has to be our, have to be our strategic clients, but we didn't have um, that definition for the team here to, to use it. So proxy is pretty good enough, but not quite, right? Because we are engaging into a completely set, a new set of, of, of new clients. So what the management team wants to do is to use the upstream work uh, that we are doing, or we will do, including some joint work with the World Bank, to identify uh, those strategic clients and to more proactively bring them, and they're going to be different depending on what problem are we trying to address in each of the countries. But the, the reason why I'm excited about this space is that uh, we're not just talking about it, we, we have plenty of new tools for the diagnostics, um, uh, private sector diagnostics, CPFs continue to be important, country diagnostics that we are doing together with the World Bank, InfraSAPs in a few countries, FSAPs in, 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 in another set of countries. Uh, we have some additional funding for our own advisory diagnostics through, through CMAV. Um, and uh, we want to use all of those to be very particular on what are the sectors where we want to engage, uh, what the bank needs to do, what are the policy blockages to bringing private sector in, and then who are the strategic clients who we can possibly bring, uh, bring to this space. And, and with that diagnostics and identifying those strategic clients, we also have something new to offer to those clients. There was a question on why would they go to IDA. They would go to IDA to be the first of its kind. In, um, it can be an important sector or a growing sector in a country where the population is growing. And so we can convince them to do that, but now we, we can offer them also some de-risking uh, instruments through private sector window or through, through blended finance in, in non-IDA countries. We can offer them advisory support, building capacity support. So that whole space, uh, which is critical to IFC's uh, strategy, will uh, determine the new way of engagement um, with the clients and hopefully will, deliver, will allow us to deal or deliver a lot, a lot greater impact. I think that the second bucket is around accountability on client engagement roles, and we went through rainmakers to client leads and now more business developers. Uh, but uh, to me, the interesting finding of the study is that uh, we, we, we deliver better impact if we deal with repeat clients. And that, that was an, a very interesting um, finding for me. And therefore, we want to recognize that and we want to tap into that and have a proper relationships and strategies with those uh, strategic clients. And as I think Hiro identified, we will be doing different things with them as we go through the cycle of multi-year engagement. I think the third area is um, that uh, we want to be more efficient. I didn't particularly like the numbers that showed on the screen that even FIG that's most efficient is still taking 390 days to deliver to a particular client on average. We, we just will not be able to be twice as big in, in, in plenty of more, ch of more challenging places, even if we deal with clients we know, if we, we don't do something internally. And I think the client envelopes 
uh, that I think Giselle mentioned that, that we are working on for repeat clients will help us so that we get approvals for the envelopes based on the client strategy rather than dealing with every single individual deal separately. That will hopefully help us become more efficient. Uh, we're looking at ways of streamlining decision uh, making in IFC. We have quite a few pilots ongoing in my region, masses, uh, manufacturing and uh, agribusiness and services is being piloted and we're already seeing how, how that streamlined decision, wake, um, uh, decision making works and we also are putting some, some efforts into simplifying the legal documentation and internal approval documentation to deal with the strategic um, clients. We had an IDFCS envelope as well for clients so, so we, we have experimented with that and, and don't get me wrong, I don't think it's just changing the documentation, I think it's a lot about changing the, the, the behaviors, changing our own mentality, learning what works, what doesn't, um, developing our skills, leveraging skills of some other people who can help us. This is quite new for us, but I think with some of these improvements also on how we engage and process those, those deals, I think we, we, we can certainly improve uh, further. And then the fourth area, Giselle mentioned, is systems. We, we have to have systems that will capture uh, all of this, and uh, there are improvements that are now going on in, in iPortal with some better client uh, analytics. Um, there will be a secure portal for streamlined and simplified interaction between IFC uh, and its clients, including reporting and access to clients' projects so that we can reduce some, some duplication. Um, we also uh, plan enhancement in client relationship management system, something that we've had on and off, tried to use it, did not use it very well. I think it's critical as we are still largely predominantly decentralized institution, it's critical to connect across different regions, share that knowledge in terms of specific client engagement, which that database can capture and also to bring in the global view uh, into it. Uh, how many calls do you need to make to understand how something works, right? If we have a proper improvement Improved client uh, relationship management database that can help us get that on a press of a button at least initially. So in closing, I really want to thank you for the good quality uh, IG evaluation. Uh, also thank, thanking the IFC team who engaged because it's, it's very rare actually that we meet so well on, on the recommendations and we uh, fully agree. Um, to repeat that this is the uh, right time and exciting time for us to revisit our uh, client engagement strategy including clarifying um, who are our, our strategic clients and a reminder to all of us the only way we can be relevant and deliver impact in our countries is uh, through our clients. So thank you very much for having me here and well done.